With the rise of the smartphone comes the digital revolution. Almost everything is a tap away from you. From the food that you wanted to eat, to the clothes that you wanted to wear, the tickets for the event you wanted to go to, your transportation vehicle for your commute, everything is just a tap away. And in this video, I'd like to share to you the financial apps that I use in my everyday life. So let's jump into the video. Number one on my list is Gcash. I made the past video about this before and for me this is the number one fintech app in the Philippines right now and it just makes my life easier and more convenient. From sending load to my relatives and sending money to my friends, especially yung mga times na kakain na kayo sa labas na mga friends mo and magulo pa diba pag mag kayo ng pera for the bill, I think common na ngayon yung isa yung magbabayad sa inyo either through debit card or credit card then through Gcash talaga kami nagbabayadan ang bag namin. They have this feature especially for this instance kaya lang I've never tried it before yung KKB feature ng app nila. Paying my bills, insurance, credit card, utilities, movie tickets, you name it, Gcash could do it. Nonetheless, my first option for payment is still credit card but if credit card is not available, my next preferable option of choice of payment is through Gcash. Second on my list is banking apps. Just download whatever bank are you connected with. And for me, majority of its uses for monitoring. Chinecheck ko kung magkano pa yung available balance ko in my savings account. And usually, chinecheck ko din yung uh, charges na na-anchor ko in my credit card every week. You should definitely monitor your credit card charges kasi it's something na most people tend to lose track of and nagugulat na lang sila sa bill nila pagka na-receive na nila yung billing statement nila. Again, I like credit card for its convenience plus I have a very strict system when it comes to purchasing things plus hindi rin naman talaga ako big spender so tracking my charges isn't that hard for me but if ikaw is a big spender and hindi mo natatrack yung charges mo so either don't get a credit card or have a very strict system when it comes to monitoring your charges. Third on my list are cashback apps and discount apps. Let's start with Eatigo. I think I was only able to use this once with my friends. So basically, it's an app that promotes restaurants by offering discounts. So if you want to try the restaurant, you should check it in the app. If they are registered in the app, then check if they have promos and try to maximize the discounts. Second app under this category is Shopback. So basically, it's an app that allows you to get money back from the things that you purchased. It goes from food, travel, clothing, electronics, and more. So, sobrang lawak ng sakop ng app na to. Again, I want to reiterate lang, hindi porket naka-discount ka sa binili mong bagay, it means naka-mura ka na. It's still wiser not to buy unnecessary things and only buy necessary things and utilize this app pagka kailangan mo talaga or you have a purpose to sa bibilin mong gamit. Fourth in this list is financing apps or loan apps. I don't have a personal experience when it comes to using these apps because I have a credit card. But for the people who doesn't have access to credit card, this is your next best available option. First under this category is home credit. You might have seen a lot of this in mga electronic store na mga malls. Next up is Cashalo. Again, another financing app. Again, these apps are businesses. Sometimes you'll get 0% interest from the loans that you'll get from them. But most of the time, you'll have to pay interest. Just be smart when it comes to loan. Again, meron naman tayong mga kinakonsider as good debt. For example, you're a freelancer and kailangan mo ng laptop and the only way na makukuha mo yung laptop mo is through accessing loans or credit. Then go for it. For as long as mababayaran mo yung loan and yung interest, then definitely go for it. I think that will be considered as a good debt. Last on my list is Investagrams. This is the app I used to look at the chart of the Philippine stock market and some individual stocks. I'm not actively trading as of the moment but I'm still monitoring yung Philippine stock market para lang meron akong big picture where the equity market will go. It is also a social media platform for the trading community so you could interact with other people out there. Just a fair warning lang, when it comes to trading, you should be aware of your bias and emotions so reading others' opinions might not be good for you. This app also has some great features. Back in 2018, when I was actively trading the stock market, I used to pay yung Investa watcher nila para lang for me to parang uh, see yung mga nangyayari dun sa mga tinitinan kong uh, stocks na binabantay ako talaga. So what it will do is, it helps me monitor yung mga stocks na yun and it sends me notification if nahit na yung cut point ko or yung entry point ko for the stocks na binabantayan ko. Okay, enough of this app. I think this is a niche-based app, especially for the trading uh, community. So ayun, if you're interested to the stock trading uh, niche, you should definitely check this app. Before I end this video, I want to mention lang these two apps. First is yung Sun Life app and then yung Google Sheets. So for me, yung Sun Life app ko, doon ko tinitinan yung mga insurance policy ko and also yung fund value ng mga VUL ko and yung mutual fund ko. So I only check it once a month. Then yung Google Sheets, I use it to track and monitor yung progress ko in, in things na may record ako. So doon naka-record yung savings ko, doon naka-record yung weight ko, 
And almost everything na nare-record ko, including nung nag-trade pa ako, the stock market back in 2018, that's where my trading journal is uh, written. So, ayun, uh, I used it to track almost everything, but kaya lang, parang somewhere in 2019, napagod na akong gawin. So, I stopped doing that, I only track yung savings ko. As of the moment. I only do brief discussions about these apps kasi gusto ko lang spark yung curiosity sa inyo and parang bigyan kayo ng idea kung ano yung mga possible ang pwede nyo gawin with these apps. Ayaw kong spoon feed kayo with all the details na pwede nyo uh, makuha dun sa mga apps na yun because I think it's just a better process pag kayo mismo sa sarili nyo yung nag-research about the apps and yung mga pwede nyo gawin. I just think it's a better process this way. Lastly, if you have a question about these apps, please Google it first. Then pag wala kayo nakitasagot, that's the time you ask me in the comment section and I'll try to help you. Uh, before I end this video, I just want to share parang good stories sa inyo. So recently, I have a friend na who's planning to propose na to his girlfriend. And I don't know, I just find it fun and good or masaya. Kasi eh, may nagpaprogress na yung mga kaibigan mo in their life. And parang they're going into the right direction. Plus, I also have a friend na nagpasa na ng resignation letter niya to parang pursue talaga what she really wanted. I don't know, uh, para sa akin, parang it's it's uh, what social media is really for. To share some good stories, to, sh to share some positivity. And yun, uh, if you have some good stories to share, let me know the comment section down below kasi gusto kong pakirinig or makabasa ng mga good stories. Alam mo, parang pang -pa good vibes lang because I, I just definitely think na yun talaga yung pinaka-purpose ng social media and that's how we should responsibly use it. Alright, that's it. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Alright, see you in the next video. Bye!